that uh, we are in the last and in closing days. We are in a time when the enemy is working over time more than ever before. And if ever we have to be a disciple for Christ, it is now. Now this morning, uh, we'll be going into, back into the book of John. But this morning, we'll be going to chapter 10 of uh, St. John. We we'll just take up a few verses from there. And this morning is a uh, debate five. Debate five, the discussion on the good shepherd. We observe that Jesus moved from one to the other. As soon as he closed up, actually he did not close up on the man that was blind. But Jesus came up right here with that reference. And not only that, that debate on the good shepherd. Because uh, the Pharisees and even the Jews, some of them, they had claimed to be shepherds that claim to be leaders. But they were not true leaders. Because if they were true leaders, they would try to embrace that man that was blind and encourage him. And even try to get him among them. But instead, they threw him out. But as soon as they threw him out, the Lord was there to pick him up. And that's the good thing about our God. He never leaves us down. He always picks us up. Even when people throw us out. And bear in mind, we will be thrown out, even from society, when we speak the truth. Whenever you speak the truth for God, a lot of people will not like you. And they'll try to destroy you. They'll try to throw you out. So be sure when we're doing it, we do it good. Don't do it halfway. Do it all the way. Not for you, but for God. So then we're going to look at chapter, at chapter 10 and verse 1. It's already on the board. Anybody have a mic close to them? They can read. We just have not much verses we're going to read this morning. Probably just five verses. And wherever we get, they will stop. Anybody read? Anybody since you have a mic? Please read for the mic so then we could get it out there. No, he, he have the mic. He have the possible. Yes, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth forth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Okay, let's stop the while. That's just four, right? Well, four. Verse and four. when he put it here. Yeah. Verse four. We'll pause there for a while and we'll do some explanation. Uh, right there, so then it could be heard and we could really get a full thing of it. We observe what happened there. As I said earlier on, the people, or the Pharisees, if we say it plain, 
and even the Jews also, some of them, they had an agenda because Jesus come along to give the people light because he was the light of the world. Mm. And remember he said earlier on, he said, while I am in this world, I am the light of the world. So the people that were in darkness for so many years, Jesus had come to release them, hmm. to deliver them, to help them, to take them from under bondage, and to bring them into that light. And that blind man was an example. Hmm. Because he was blind physically, as I said, and he was also blind spiritually. But the day that he obeyed Jesus, his eyes hmm. was open both physically and spiritually. What the Lord wants us to do just to believe and to obey him. Even though we do not understand but he said, for the gospel's sake, believe me and obey me. And when we can obey the Lord, believe in him and obey him, things can be very easy for us. Yes. We start from Adam and Eve mm. and it goes right down. Mm. This obedience starts right in the garden and disbelief or unbelief. It starts right there. Doubting started mm -hmm. right there in the Garden of Eden. And it ran right down into the world. And today, we still have it going on. Right now, as I speak, it is still going on. Lies are still going on. And unbelief are still going on. And those things will go until Jesus come. But we that are born again, Let's believe. You see, verily, verily, your true, true, I say unto you, he that climbeth, he that entereth not by the door hmm. into the ship fold, but climbeth of some other way, the same is a thief and, and a robber. A robber. <laughs> now, we have a question right here in that first verse. We observe he said uh, something that a thief and a robber. Who does that question? What's the difference between a thief and a robber? Now you had a mic pastor, sir, and just give an explanation about the thief and a robber. Well, a thief or a robber, if they come to your house, they don't come in through the front door. They sneak in some kind of way. Yes. They come through some window or a crack somewhere where they can get in, not through the front door. Okay. I don't know whether that's what you're asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the question is asking, what's the definition? What's the difference between a thief and a robber? Are they the same person, same kind of people, or there is a difference between the both? Because Jesus mentioned a thief and a robber. A thief is one who comes in and, and generally not seen. Sneaks in, you know, with a, a robber will face you <laughs> and take from you. Okay, okay. Anybody understand that? The difference with the both? A thief, a thief is the type of guy that sneaks. He's sneaky about what he does. A robber, he don't really care. Okay, and that's just what Pastor said. Yeah, he'll come up, he'll come up <laughs> and stick his mm. gun. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's what the Lord that's what the Lord was very saying. A thief and a robber. Which means, as uh, Brother David said and Pastor said, one is sneaky. He will hide and do it. He will steal in secret. 
But a robber will face you and feel right inside of your eyes, right in the eyes. He will walk on you and take what you have. He'll destroy you, watching you and you watching him. He bold face. You can call that bold face or murderer. A destroyer, a criminal. He don't care. He don't care. So that's why we have to be careful with those people and look at the before why Jesus speak that way. Jesus tell him exactly, say you're a thief and a robber. As the Bible said, the thief cometh what to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Actually, it's one person, but they have different how to say it. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Characteristic. Right. Different person. They have different characteristics. He one one can be dangerous and one can do his thing in secret. He had to do it. Or sneaking as you said. Yeah, but uh, in verse 2 he said, but he that entereth. Now Jesus first was talking about the thief and the robber. He said, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The shepherd of the sheep. In other words, he do it right. He do it right. He don't climb up windows. Hmm. He go through the door. But we will observe something a little lower down as we go down. He said to him, the potter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his sheep, or his own sheep, by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he go forward, or he go before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. In other words, the sheep know their owner. They know their leader. If somebody walk inside and, and tell us their pastor, his pastor Carl, we know a pastor, right? Then we have to ask them, but why you say you with Pastor Carl? We know him. You don't look nothing close to him. You don't speak like him. You don't behave like him. No, you don't act like him. He doesn't look like him. So why you say he's a pastor? Hmm. And then we we'll say straight, no. You are not. You're somebody else. In fact, you're a sheep or you're a wolf in sheep clothing. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. You haven't got his character. You're not anything close to him because we know our pastor. And it is so good when you know your leader and your leader know you. That is very important, church. You know what I said? It is good to know your leader mm -hmm. and your leader know you. Mm -hmm. In the mega churches, there may, there may be some people that their leader do not know because mm -hmm. there are too many. Some people just walk into the church just to hide on the people. But really, they are not born again. They are not born again. And there's a lot of people in churches today that are not born again. True. They just walk in into the church just like that, to, like a recreation or believe it's just a church. But it's more than that. 
A four corner post is just a building to house the church. People come in there and they are not part of the church. The church is a body of baptized believers. Mm. People that are born again. Mm -hmm. We are the church and not the wall right. or the building. Right. A lot of people do not know that. When you tell them, ask them, where are you going today? They say to church, or we're going to church. And then sometimes you might ask them, are you part of that particular church? They'll ask you, what do you mean? Because they do not know. A lot of people do not know the church is the body of baptized believers, people that are born again. Now a church can be a body of believers. Hear me good. A church can be a body of believers. But who do they believe in? Do you believe in Christ? Mm. You can believe in someone else. And it is a church. Mm -hmm. Because it is the body. Of, uh, of, of believing people. But believe in who? Mm. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he is the head of the church. He is the head of the ecclesia. He is the head of the people that believe in Christ and him crucified. That's who we believe in. Christ and him crucified. That's what every Christian or whoever Christian believe in. That's who we believe in. That Jesus, he came... He died on the cross. He was rejected after three days and gone back to his father and now interceding for us. On the right of the father, full of grace and truth. We are Holy Ghost filled and water, and water baptized. We believe in that. That's how we believe. We are sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. Many speak in tongues, many don't. But we believe in the Lord. We are born again. Yes. We are transformed. And that's what we need to tell people when they go to witnessing. You don't only jump on people and ask them if they're born again right away. You will run them. You will drive them away. But find some way to tell it to them. Or to ask them that question. Especially when it comes to witnessing, it, 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 it's somewhat hard. Because you have to train to be able to tell people about the Lord. That's why a lot of people do not want to go. Because they're scared. But when you are born again, and you begin to grow spiritually, you will shine for the Lord. You will glow. When you begin to glow, because you have grown, you only begin to glow when you begin to grow. Mm. And when you begin to grow, then you want to go. Why do you want to go? Because you want to show that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Craig. No, I don't. Oh. So when you want to tell people that Jesus Christ is the Lord, you have to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. You cannot tell what you do not know. You have to know in order to tell the story. Yes, well, let's look at that verse. That last verse, verse 5. He said, a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from them, for they know not the voice of strangers. Now, 
Now hear what Brother Paul had to say in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13 to 15. First, Second Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. Brother Craig, just read that, please, as you have the mic. We're going to close our Bible. And when he putteth right forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yeah, yeah it says, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians. That's for what such there? are false apostles deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself transformed into an angel of light, is transformed to an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay. Okay, Brother Craig, you just give a little explanation of that and we'll close up there. Um, it means that there, Second Peter 2 says there shall be false, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies. And in, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel was taken through the wall and he was shown a lot of the preachers of that time who were worshiping the sun and Tammuz, the women of the church were worshiping Tammuz. So what the scripture is referring to is false teaching and false teachers, false prophets. Throughout the church today, there are many false teachers, many false prophets, and they will come to you in sheep's clothing saying that, hey, bah, bah, I'm a sheep. But inward, they, they are ravenous wolves. So they destroy the flock. Um, we see this in many of the major churches today where people are teaching things that should not be taught in the name of the Lord and speaking things that should not be spoken in the name of the Lord. So he's warning us to be careful of these things. Amen. Do we get that? That's what happening today. In today, they have a lot of people worshiping the, worshiping the sun. And right here, right here, right among us in a, right in Los Angeles, you see the symbol, if not close, not so far from where I live, you, you see the symbol where they have it hung up right at the door. You call them sun worshipers. People worshiping the S-U-N. Are not S O N. That's why you have to be very careful to listen to people teaching because they can be misled and go to a place where it was not built for you. Because the devil, as I said before, didn't build a hell, but hell was prepared for him. And he wants everyone that are on earth to follow him. So he tried means and ways as to mislead people. And he sent our disciples to do that. So let's trust God and not man. Let us be careful. That's the end of our lesson this morning. So uh, we thank God for great things he has done and great things he will do. Let's pick up the uh, offering and then we close. Now as... Hi, the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God provided a way for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not die, but shall live forever. That means you don't have to go to hell. The scripture says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and if you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For by confessing with the mouth, you so are justified, and by believing with the heart, you are saved. So if you feel that tug in your spirit, that's God choosing you and giving you a chance to come to him. Just repeat after me this simple sinner's prayer. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner, 
and I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to allow your son Jesus to come into my heart with, this, with your sweet Holy Spirit. I believe that he died for my sins and that he rose from the dead on the third day and is seated at your right hand. Amen. If you did that, you are in the family of God. Tell somebody about it. And also pray that he'll send you to a Bible-believing church. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.